it's happened. So this one here, crazy case. This has been going on since 2017. They just made an arrest a year ago. Um, this is the murders of Abby and Libby in Delphi, Indiana. And what currently just happened is another leak. So today's, like I said, Dimitri, today's topic is leaks. Sure. <laughs> so <clears throat> what happened in this one is crime scene photos this time. We've had several leaks throughout the years in these in this case. We've had witness lists leaked. We've had other documents leaked. It's been a mess. But we have a trial that's supposed to start in January. And now we have crime scene photos that were leaked by a member of the defense, a prior member of the defense team passed on to another individual that was then passed on to YouTubers. And then another pot a podcaster contacted the police and the court and let them know that they had these photos. So when this came out last week, the judge promptly set a hearing for this week and told the lawyers, clear your schedules. We're going to do a status conference and we're going to address some of these recent happenings. OK, so <clears throat> in the meantime, we've got a trial that's supposed to start. Then we've got three days later after this hearing is scheduled. We have the person who used to work for the defense that allegedly leaked these photos unalived himself. So this all transpired in the last week. We don't know if it's associated, if it's because of this or not. He has a wife and children. Our thoughts go out to him, to his family. It's horrible. It's a horrible situation to an already horrible crime. But what can happen, Dimitri, with crime scene photos? They've had this all under wraps for years, seven years. And now this, this huge leak of they came out with the Odinism defense. And now they, you know, these Photos of the bodies have been leaked that apparently back up their narrative. Where do we stand? Well, you know, when a leak is in question, the real important part becomes who leaked it. Because the folks involved in this case, all depending on who they are, have different duties, right, as to what they can do, what they cannot do. Um, and that will depend on the judge's actions, right? Right. Private citizens can, generally speaking, do whatever they want when it comes to disclosing information. Generally speaking, I, I don't want, you know, you can get sued for defamation if you lie and other things. And I get that and other things possibly. But generally can do whatever they want. Once you're involved in the criminal process, once you're a cop or a prosecutor, defense lawyer, work for the courts, juror, once you do that and then you leak, you not only have your potential criminal issues, you have professional issues, right? Because all of these people take duties and, 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 and take oaths and, and sign uh, their names to all these things that, that basically say that they will abide by the rules of the court. And so what can happen to whoever leaked what will depend on who was the leaker. Mm -hmm. You know? That's mm -hmm. the most important question here. That's what will have to be addressed, really, before any further analysis. So it wouldn't necessarily fall on the defense lawyers if they have to prove that the defense lawyers gave it to this guy for a sinister reason to share it, right? If the defense lawyers leaked information that they weren't supposed to leak um, for whatever reason, and then somebody shares it, then the defense lawyers can get in trouble for sure. So if someone from their team shares something, are they responsible for that person? Are are they held to the standard of you're responsible for, you know, the information shared within your team and that being held confidential? So in terms of liability, those kinds of things exist, but not in terms of being sanctioned by the court. Uh, generally speaking, if, if the lawyers didn't know that somebody working for them did certain things, they won't be held responsible unless there's, again, there's some connection that's drawn. Mm -hmm. They have to be able to prove that they knew it was happening. Yeah, they have to show some degree of culpability. Either they knew it was happening or they 
overlooked something and therefore it happens, things like that. Can the judge remove them from this case without proving that? The judge can do whatever the judge wants, right? When you when it comes to a criminal case, every defendant has the right to counsel. If you're going to deprive a defendant of the lawyer that that defendant wants, you better have a real good reason for doing it, right? If there's a conflict of interests, that may be one reason. Um, the judge can also do things like create such an environment for that lawyer that the lawyer may want to get off himself. And that may be problematic to do in the middle of a case. Um, so those are kind of the moving parts in question now. Hmm. Hmm. It just seems crazy to me to think about those those lawyers being a part of any kind of leak and then continuing forward with the case. It seems very. Um, they, they could be punished. They could be referred to the disciplinary committee. Their licenses may be in jeopardy. But There's a whole lot of avenues it could a go. A whole lot of avenues. But, but you got to be real careful before you take that lawyer away from his client, right? Because now you're interfering with the attorney client relationship and you're interfering with the right to counsel. And, oh man, yes, we don't like that, right? We like people to be able to choose and keep their lawyers. Ooh, see that? See that gets, gets sticky when you have yep. the, the rights of the defendant versus everything that's going on, right? Well, right. Well, uh, again, when it comes to a criminal case, all that matters is the rights of the defendant, right? The whole reason we have all these rules is so that the government, the all powerful, almighty, all resourceful government can't do what it wants to defend it, right? So you always have to think of these questions in the context of the impact on the defendant. The defendant is why the constitution exists to protect the defendant, right? That's why we were founded, right? Right, right. And, and we defendant. tend to like, oh, we hate the defendant because he's he did this or that, you know? You can hate him, but you still got to protect his rights. You still got to protect his rights, yeah. The right to, to a lawyer and the lawyer you want, that's a pretty big one. Right, especially if he says, no, I really don't want to switch lawyers, right? That's right. And that, that creates even a stronger case to keep those lawyers in place for him. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. You're going to have to have a real good argument. For example, wow. conflict of interest is one, right? That's one reason that lawyers are sometimes removed from cases. Right. If, for example, you have a criminal case where it turns out that the defendant's lawyer at some point represented a witness in the case. If that's the case, now that lawyer is in conflict and now you may have to remove that defendant, uh, that lawyer. Right. Or you may have to create a mechanism by which another lawyer does a certain witness and then that lawyer stays on for the other portions of the case. Right. So those are the way that the, those are the ways that judges deal with these issues. It's funny to me, you know, listening to you talk as a lawyer that none of this surprised you. Like you weren't like, Oh my God, you know, I can't believe this, this happened. Like none of it really seems shocking to you. It's because not my, shocking. I'm yeah, looking at my questions and I'm just like, what can happen? Like what's next? I'm thinking this is such a big deal. Look, don't get me wrong. Lawyers doing bad things in cases is a really big deal for the lawyers. I mean, sure. You're risking your license, you're risk, you're risking other things. I mean, it, it's a really, you know, when you're a lawyer, you really don't want to ever cross that line because that's a real bad place to be. Um, yeah. So but, it says something about integrity, right? It's not about integrity. The rules say you can't do certain things. Listen, the profession is structured such that we don't rely on the integrity of lawyers. <laughs> you know, that's true. <laughs> we, we, we regulate, we regulate them. Obviously lawyers have to maintain, you know, a certain degree of integrity um, because, it is a self-regulating profession to a degree. Um, but there are rules in place that lawyers can't violate and practicing laws of privilege, not a right. And if you're, you know, in violation of those rules, that privilege will be taken away from you at some point. So that brings me to my next question on this. What, if anything, do these antics say about, tell us about the defense's case? And does it tell us anything? Well, it, it look, you have to, to the extent that a lawyer is being zealous and is representing his or her client strongly, that's a good thing for the defense. Um, you don't want lawyers to take that too far and violate any rules. And that doesn't, you know, lawyers are required to explore every possible piece of information that may help their client. So that doesn't necessarily mean that they're struggling or their case is weak, mm -hmm. um, you know. These are all conclusions that you can't really jump to yet. So interesting to me. I love the whole defense 
<laughs> lawyer um like way of thinking so it brings me to another question that kind of piggybacks off that one it doesn't necessarily mean they have a weak case at all is what you're saying not necessarily right but as a defense lawyer and this is kind of a more of a general question not really case specific do you i'm going to pick your brain a little bit on your how you do things do you guys go back through discovery so like let's say you're handling a murder and you go and you look through discovery do you see everybody that the um the police interviewed early on and you read through all of those interviews and if there's something maybe that piques your interest that you could possibly use to cast some doubt that's that's you're going to grab that maybe right like of course <laughs> So like yes. if you, okay, so for example, if you have a interview with people that are in Odinism, they, they are practicing Odinists, and then you have them speak, you know, the prosecutor talking to a Purdue professor who, you know, studied German runes and all this stuff. And he says, yeah, you know, it does look like something that could be part of that. Um, and that could be something that was staged to look like a certain group did that. But what my point is, is that they obviously prosecution didn't go forward with that narrative. They didn't move forward with this Odinism narrative for whatever reason. So is that something as a defense lawyer that maybe hmm, they didn't grasp onto that? But we have a Purdue professor saying it damn well could be, you know, so that might be something that would entice you as far as a defense. Most criminal cases are tried by defense lawyers on reasonable doubt, okay? What that means is that you can go into to, to a case in one of two ways. Either you can try it on actual innocence, which is when you get up in front of the jury and you say, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, we will argue as the defense that our client is innocent of this, right? Because of X, Y, and Z. Or you get up in front of the jury and say, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the prosecution has a burden of proof in this case. That burden is beyond a reasonable doubt. I, as the defense lawyer, my client, we have to do nothing here. We can sit and sleep. All right. And that does not remove the burden from the prosecution. So we will show you why the prosecution didn't meet that burden. That's called reasonable doubt. And what happens if you try a case on reasonable doubt? You could, it should happen if you try a case on either of those. But if you try it particularly on reasonable doubt, then you're goal in the case is to poke holes right obviously do it in good faith obviously do it ethically don't you know make arguments that are nonsensical and, and make stuff up and make frivolous points you can get in trouble for that you shouldn't do that but your goal your obligation as the defense lawyer is to do everything you can to make sure that you create enough in the case to have your client acquitted Right. And so that may be part of it. You will go through every piece of paper and try to connect what you see in there to your defense. And if you're trying it on reasonable doubt, that's exactly what would happen. Right. So that's what you would do. And again, you should only do it in good faith, but that's what you would do. When you say good faith, does that mean as far as you're concerned, keeping it in the courtroom how do you feel about um, things be theories and things being leaked um, before there's been a jury chosen, you know, like leaking things to the press and things like that. Yeah. Is that kind are... of skeezy antics there? Well, yes. A B there are rules in place and those rules are really uh, specific. So you can't really rely on them too much, but there are rules in place, ethics rules that will limit what you can say to the press right? Lawyers can't talk to the press in order to impact the litigation. That's not allowed. Now, that rule is very hard to enforce. It almost is never enforced, right? Um, sometimes you have it in cases where lawyers will represent a client and write a book, you know, things like that. Um, but it's generally not enforced when lawyers talk to the press because there are exceptions, you know, and if you have a high profile case and you need to talk to the press to rebut allegations that have been reported on, you can do that. And then there are a bunch of other things. Um, so you got to be careful. Um, but generally, there aren't problems with lawyers talking to the press. 
You just have to make sure that you don't violate any rules, obviously. Interesting. Interesting. It's, it's crazy to me what you guys, like the little tactics you can use to kind of cast out. Cause really that's all they have to do. And if they're doing that, then they're doing a good job. Right. Yeah. And it depends, right. There are some lawyers. It, it's, it's tough to, 